what Mac computer is the best Mac computer that you could use to perform with on stage. Hey everybody, this is Will Doggett and in today's video, we're starting a brand new series where we're gonna walk through the five things you need to use multi-tracks. Well, today I wanna talk about computers. Uh, I wanna talk in particular about Mac computers and which Mac computer is the best computer to use on stage. And to get there, I'm gonna share a few tips, a few tips and tricks that I use uh, personally when I go to buy a computer that hopefully will help you get to that point. Now, before you go through this video, um, on Monday's episode of Behind the Space Bar, which is a podcast I release uh, for playback text musicians, music directors, really anyone using Ableton Live, um, I kind of introduced the idea of the five things that you're gonna need if you're gonna use multitrack. So check out that episode, I linked it in the description of this video. But again, in this video, I wanna talk about that first foundational piece, which is a computer. Uh, what computer is right for you? What's the best Mac uh, to use on stage? And what are some tips and tricks you can use when it comes to purchasing a Mac? Now, before I get into today's content, I do wanna preface this and say, the reason I'm not saying what's the best computer Windows Mac to use is I don't have the experience on a Windows computer to be able to recommend with authority and with confidence what Windows machine you could buy. My general recommendations to folks using Windows machines is don't go to Target and go buy a, a computer that you can find there. There, um, you're, you're going to need to spend a little bit of time of researching. And Windows is a little more difficult because it's fragmented. There's so many different manufacturers. Um, and I just personally am a Mac user. I'm not going to get into the Mac versus PC debate. But if you're a Windows user, here's my suggestion to you. Let me know in the comments of this video uh, what you're personally using. If it's working for you, if you're having issues, don't recommend it. But if it's working for you, uh, it'd be awesome if you could help serve the community just by saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. Uh, here's the computer I'm using. I'm not looking for someone to say, oh, you're an idiot if you buy a Mac. You gotta buy, you gotta build your own custom PC. If you're not, you're an idiot. Uh, this isn't the space for that, but I would love to know what Windows computer are you using? Um, and I've used some nice ones. Some of the surfaces are nice. Uh, I've used the Lenovo. That's super nice. Um, that, that was someone else's, but let me know. I want to hear from you, but let's, let's talk about uh, from the Mac side of things. Number one, the first tip I have is don't overbuy. Gosh, I do lessons with folks all the time and, and often they'll come in. They're new to using tracks. They say, Hey, I just bought a brand new Mac. And I look at the specs of the computer and they spent four, five grand on this laptop they, they just basically maxed out. They went to the able the Apple site, maxed it out, which is a fun thing to do. Let me know in the comments if you have done that before. You just hit and add every edition to see how high price you could get. Um, you don't have to do that, right? You, you don't have to overbuy. Uh, you don't have to buy the fanciest, nicest computer. If you have the budget, you have the means to do so. There's nothing wrong with it, uh, but you don't need an, an amazing, super, super fast, latest, greatest Mac in order to run tracks. Um, so tip number one, don't overbuy. Tip number two, check out Ableton's uh, minimum system requirement. So again, if you're still watching this and you're a Windows PC person, you can find their recommendations for Windows here as well too. On the Mac side uh, for Live 11, they say High Sierra 10.13 to Monterey 12 uh, is supported and recommended at least an Intel Core i5 processor. Uh, but they say Apple Silicon is supported and recommended as well too, at least eight gigs RAM. So use the the minimum system requirements as like a base level uh, to, to essentially consider. Uh, now, tip number three is any M1 Mac is gonna be sufficient and is gonna suffice. So I'm over on the, Able, uh, the Apple site here um, and really any base level uh, Apple M1 computer is gonna be perfect. So let's go over to the MacBook Air section here. Um, again, we're looking at those minimum system requirements as, as defined by Ableton. And they say that's a great starting place. It's not necessarily when you, where you want to stay based on what you're doing. But if I'm looking to run tracks in Ableton Live, again, what was tip number one? Don't overbuy. If I'm running tracks in Ableton Live, an M1 MacBook Air with eight gigs of RAM and 256 storage is plenty. Now, this is a personal preference of mine that not everyone shares. I tend to leave my internal storage smaller. So I do a 256 um, a gig internal drive uh, and I use external storage to store my tracks on. And then I run just my set on the internal. I mean, you're you're more than welcome to bump this up to two terabytes. Uh, some of the newer computers, I think, I think the studio, if I remember correctly, Mac Studio goes up to eight terabytes. If, if you wanna do that and have the money, great but I like using external storage, backing things up uh, and just using internal for kind of active projects, active things I'm using. But this MacBook Air, it's again, it's plenty fast, right? Uh, if you're running tracks. Now, if you're not running tracks, 
uh, let's say you're uh, you're not just running tracks. Let's say you're running tracks and, and using keys. Typically, people say, what's the best computer for me to run tracks and use keys on? Here's what I would recommend instead. Tip number four, consider buying two computers. If you are running tracks and keys, um, consider buying two computers. If you are running tracks and you're really uh, dependent on tracks or if that computer went down, uh, it would be bad. Uh, your band would sound different. You are really relying on that. Consider buying two computers. So here's what's great about this is if I'm running tracks, that's all I'm doing in Ableton Live, consider buying um, uh, two MacBook Airs. I'm going to talk about my personal suggestion that I love, uh, that I, I think is, is super beneficial and super helpful. But um, I would rather you buy two computers and split the, the processing load, one for tracks and one for keys, than buying one supercomputer where everything's stored on one and you're kind of maxed out on one. You also have the one screen. You could add external displays and stuff, obviously, but um, having two different separate computers, one for keys, one for tracks, is always going to be a better opportunity. Again, go back to tip one. Don't overbuy. You don't have to have a massive, like, blown out computer um, in order to run keys well on that computer. Now, I would not personally suggest running keys and hosting a lot of soft sense on a computer that has eight gigs of RAM, um, uh, eight core CPU and eight gigs of RAM, but that's a fast enough computer for tracks. Now let's get to uh, tip number five here. If you're going to use uh, a computer for keys, um, then you need more RAM and more cores. So I'm over on the site, the Apple site here, we're going to go to Mac uh, computers. Let's go, let's look at the MacBook Pro here. Um, let's talk about, again, if I'm going to be using this computer for keys, I want more RAM. I want more uh, cores. Um, I personally, this is just my personal suggestion. If you're looking at the MacBook Pro 13 inch, don't buy it. Just buy the MacBook Air. Like just skip this guy. Go ahead and buy the MacBook Air. Uh, I believe spec wise, they're identical. Uh, I, the, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro may be a little bigger, but just go with the MacBook Air. But when we start to get into the newer 14 inch or 16 inch, this is where it gets really interesting. Um, the only real difference between 14 and 16 inch is just form factor. So think about that, consider that. But let's look at the 14 inch here. So I wanna harp on this point, um, more RAM, more cores. So if I'm doing uh, and using this for keys, um, here's what I'm gonna look at. So uh, eight core CPU, 10 core CPU. Let's start with the eight core. We're gonna boost this up a little bit. Um, we have the M1 Pro eight core. Again, if I'm doing keys, uh, I'm probably gonna bump this up to 10 core, right? Uh, that's, that's gonna help me. Uh, with keys a lot. So I'm going to bump that up to 10 core. And then as far as uh, memory, I'm going to go to at least 32 gigs. So when I talk about the Will Doggett minimum system requirements, uh, particularly for keys, you may be able to get by with 16 gigs. If you can afford it, go up to 32 gigs of RAM. Okay. Now there is a 64 gig option here. You've got to go to the M1 max to get that. I think that's this is where you're potentially overbuying. Look, we're already at 3000 uh, over $3,200 for that. I think that's probably more computer than you need. But if you are a like heavy keys player, you use a lot of plugins or you just have the money uh to throw at stuff like that, go ahead. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. Um from there we can go up to uh I guess on the 16 we can go up to 10 core uh, uh well we did 10 core on this machine. So I would suggest the 14 again if you need the 16 just for the exercise, you could do that. Um I would stay if you're getting the 16, I would stay on just this entry level one here. Um, go up to 32 again, if you need that exercise, if you really want 64, again, it's not going to hurt. It's going to make it a better experience, but you're, you're going to pay a little bit more money Then we could bump up and do that. But again, we're looking at $3,500 here, which is, uh, which is pretty nuts in my mind. Now, another tip, uh, tip number six, when it comes to, uh, buying a Mac, choosing a computer for stage is consider form factor. Um, let me give you some practical uh, we'll say will dog it best practices tips that I follow when it comes to form factor. So let's go back to this main Mac page. Number one, do not buy an iMac to use on stage. I've seen people use iMacs on stage again. I mean, to each his own, if you want to do it and it works for you, great. I think it looks a little goofy. It's like very noticeable. And I think for most of us that are using tracks on stage, we're trying to do it in a discreet way to where we can stay connected uh, to the audience. Um, I've seen worship leaders that, you know, look like they're commandeering the space shuttle or something. They have screens all around them. I'm not a huge fan of that. Like that breaks the connection between people. And, and I'm a nerd. I'm a computer guy. I enjoy computers and stuff, but I just don't, don't get an iMac. Um, consider form factor for me, when it comes to using 
tracks on Sage, using Ableton Live on Sage. Uh, I am a Mac Mini. I love Mac Minis. Again, I'm biased here. Uh, I'm using the M1 Mac Mini. I bought it uh, basically as soon as it came out. Um, I love it. I've had zero issues with it. It's been amazing. Uh, but here's the thing I love about the M1 Mac Minis. Let's say uh, when it comes to form factor, uh, let's say we're just running tracks. All we're doing is running tracks. We want a redundant machine. The M1 chip with eight core CPU, eight gigs of RAM is plenty. Base level Mac is plenty for running tracks. What I would do instead of going, uh, we looked at that MacBook Pro that's 16 inches that was what, $3,500. Instead of that, I would buy two uh, M1 Mac minis. If you have the money, this this is what I do, did. I'll show you practically what I did. I just bumped this up to 16 gigs. Again, I leave uh, less internal storage. That's just my personal preference, how I do things. I went up to 16 gigs. Um, you could leave it perfectly fine to leave it on eight, but if you can afford it, go to 16 to give you a little more headroom. Um, but buy two of these. And here's what's really cool. Uh, form factor matters. If we buy two Mac minis, we could put them in this rack Mac mini, which is, this is one of my favorite things in all the world to do is rack up two Mac minis side by side, uh, redundant rig using a plate audio 12, um, uh, to do redundancy. We can do MIDI redundancy as well too. It's super, super powerful. Um, and, and just a really, really great setup. So consider form factor. And again, what I really mean by that is I consider Mac minis because I love them racking two of them up. Uh, and have redundancy or have one be keys and one be your tracks machine. You could still use a play audio 12 to split those, uh, those outputs, uh, outputs between those two computers if you want to, um, uh, which I, I think is uh, super awesome. Awesome. So Mac minis, but again, the other form factor thing is just please don't buy an iMac to use on Sage. I would even say, don't, don't even buy like a Mac pro and have that sitting on Sage. That's, that's more of a showpiece than it is a, a practicality. Again, I'm not judging if you want to buy it, you want to have it sitting there for everyone to see. Great. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be great. But as a form factor, I don't think it's it's the best possible thing to use on stage. Okay. Tip number seven, we're watching this. You're going, um, I love the Mac ecosystem. I'm into it. I want to buy this, but uh, budget's tight right now. Let me show you a pro tip, something that I've uh, done for all my Macs, except for this M1 Mac mini, uh, is if you go to the Apple store, Scroll down to the bottom here. Let's see if we can find this. Uh, at the bottom, um, where where is it here? Under Shop and Learn, I believe. Apple Store, here we go. Under Apple Store, Refurbished and Clearance. I'll actually add the link in the description of this. Um, what's really great is we can go and say, let's filter by Refurb uh, Max. Again, I'm a Mac Mini guy, so let's go to Mac Mini. Uh, look, we could get that base level uh, Mac for $589, um, eight core, uh, let's see, is this, a uh, is this eight gigs or is this 16? Yeah, this is eight gigs, 256. I'm, I'm all about it for tracks. Uh, we can get that for 589, save $110. Um, uh, you, you kind of have to check often here because the inventory changes. In fact, when I bought my MacBook pros, which it's time for me to up, upgrade, uh, I tried to buy two identical models and, um, one was removed from my car after a couple of days cause they had already sold it. So quantities are limited on this, but go to the page and, and just scroll around and kind of see what they have and compare prices, uh, and compare options here and see what you can get. But buying a refurb, uh, um, Mac is, is a great way to get uh, a Mac that still has a warranty. You can still buy Apple care for it, but you're going to save a little bit of money when you do that. So those are a couple tips I have for choosing uh, a Mac, uh, to use on stage. Again, whatever you get, that's an M1 Mac is going to be great. The base level is going to be great. If you're using keys, add some more Ram to it, consider buying two computers, rewatch this video for the other tips if you want it. Um, but you're going to find a really great computer. It's a great time to be searching for a computer. Um, I want to make this easy for you. I shared some tips and tricks here, but if you want my suggestions on what computers you should get, um, what audio interfaces you should get, MIDI controllers you should get, head to fromstudiostage.com slash gear. I've put together a gear guide that, that brings all of those suggestions together. I even talk about some streaming gear, uh, some gear that I use for streaming gigs to create tutorial videos, things like that. Um, uh, to find that again from studiostage.com slash gear, completely free. 
I think you're going to dig it. It's going to get you further faster by getting those suggestions. And then finally, uh, every Saturday, I release a, a brand new tutorial all about gear, 10 a.m. Central. And in fact, we're continuing this series where we're going to talk about uh, what do we consider, uh, what things are important to us when we're choosing gear. Uh, and so if you want to see next week's video, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified when a new piece of content comes out. If you're a gearhead like I am, you can see all the gear behind me. I'm, I, I'm a fan of gear. You, you probably are too. Then stick around. Join me every Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. Uh, and then once the video goes live, you can watch it on demand at any time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate your support. And we'll see you next Saturday as we continue talking about gear. Who doesn't love gear? Everyone does. See ya. Bye. <laughs>